The job is to take the animals grazing from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. We look after their health, we feed them, help them raise their offspring, and help them develop their full potential. I love training my animals. It feels very good to know that they also learn to love you as well. And in the end, you don't know if you love them more or if they love you more. People that work with sheep, we develop a strong bond with them, and they become part of our daily lives. We now invite you to visit our sheep farm. Sheep, like bovines, are ruminants. Their diet is based on fresh grass and can be easily supplemented. They also use their four compartment stomach to carry out their ruminant process and absorb nutrients. They can be divided into two categories, hair and wool sheep. These develop depending on the weather and the genetic traits of the species. This important skin trait makes them resistant to heat and cold. Sheep are gregarious animals, meaning they are accustomed to stay together while they graze and they become scared if separated from the group. They are social animals and they are generally looking after each other. They generally have a leader whom they follow, and the lambs always follow the adults. This animal has a better sense of taste than cattle, which qualifies them as selective ruminants. They select their food with their lips, and then they cut it with their teeth. There are two types of sheep, hair and wool sheep, and they can be divided into meat, wool, milk, and leather, depending on their economic use. They are also dual-purpose sheep, and in some cases, they are classified by how prolific they are. Around the world, there are over 200 breeds of sheep, and each one has specific characteristics that determine their value at the sheep farm. Sheep are a species that have accompanied the small and medium-sized rancher for many years, and they have been an important source of food and income for ranchers in Colombia. On this ranch, we have 620 animals, 50 of which are purebred, belonging to the Santa Ines, White Dorper, and Dorper breeds. The rest of the crosses are Catadin, Santa Ines, Pelibue and Dorper, and they are split between breeder females and female lambs, and we have some animals undergoing finishing. In this ranch, we have implemented two production systems. Intensive for pure breed sheep and semi-intensive for commercial animals. They also have functional installations tailored to the company's development level the economic feasibility of the economic process and to the environmental characteristics. <laughs> to begin, let's learn about the purebred sheep raised on this ranch. The Dorper is a South African breed that came about as a cross between a Dorset and a Persian sheep. This is a docile and vigorous looking breed. The females have a strong maternal instinct, a long productive life, and easy births. They reach excellent weights at birth and at weaning. 
The DORPA performs well in different climates, and they are considered one of the most productive and low-maintenance breeds. All of those traits put together make them an excellent option for improving the herd's genetics at a low cost, leading to increased profits. The White Dorper is a South African breed that is the result of a cross between a Dorset and a Van Roy sheep. Since these breeds are used for meat production, they are not crossed any further. This is a very rustic breed and they easily adapt to different environments. They have good maternal traits and their meat is lean. The Santa Inez breed is native to Brazil and is a result of native hair sheep crossed with Bergamasca males. This breed has the advantage of being very versatile since they can adapt to life on the pasture or in the stable. Santa Inez sheep have a low fat content and high quality hides. They are known for their large sized females with good sized udders and excellent maternal abilities. Their diet is based on cut grass, moringa, and silage, and they feed on concentrate at will, which we supply three times a day. My job in the sheep farm is to be in charge of the pure breed lambs. I oversee their feeding from the time of birth, care for them if they are sick, and make sure they are given the right amount of milk. When the animals reach two months of age, we begin to prepare them for exhibition. I coddle them, spoil them, graze them, bathe them when necessary, fix their legs, and shear them. The preparation of animals for show begins when they are two months of age. The first step is to tickle them, which consists of touching the animal, caressing him, and giving him love. That way they learn to recognize me. They recognize my smell, and they gradually begin to trust me. A leash is then placed. This must be done with patience, dedication, and care, seeking to convey trust and security. That way, trauma to the animal can be avoided. You also need to have an animal guide, which can be an adult animal, one that has been previously trained. Once they recognize the leash and learn to trust it, we start to tie them to the handling tube. For that, it is necessary to leave them on a long leash, up until the point where they can be fully attached to the tube. When the animals learn to be relaxed on the handling tube, we make them turn on the wheel. For this, they also need the guidance of an adult animal. This way, they will learn to walk with a leash more easily. Once they start to walk, we begin to walk them on a hard track and on a soft track. The idea is that when they come up for judgment, they will be trained and can adapt to any type of terrain. It is necessary to expose the animals to different types of noise as part of their training. I use different types of music so that when they get in the show floor, they won't be bothered by noise and they will walk out calmly. And they let me handle them and show them properly. Finally, Marley teaches them how to stand properly on the show floor. She caresses him delicately all over, including his legs. That way, they can get used to letting her handle them without difficulty. When you take an animal to the showroom, you feel a mixture of emotion and nerves. 
because we have always been taking care of them, and you're always afraid that things won't work out as planned. But once they hand out a prize to an animal, a ribbon, you feel an incomparable feeling after seeing all of the effort we have put into those animals pay off. When I don't win, I cry. <laughs> On the contrary, when an animal goes to the showroom and we don't get a ribbon, you feel sad. But at the same time, you keep alive the hope that you might get a prize at another opportunity. Since once the animal's been trained, it will never go away. In order to implement an adequate management program in a livestock enterprise, it is necessary to take into account the psychological state and growth stage of the animals. Even though each phase should be treated separately, it is important to know that it should all be unified through a proper record-keeping system. Now, let us see what type of management is carried out in this commercial sheep farm such as mountings, lactation, and feeding. These mounting models allow us to keep an adequate control of females that have been served. Right now, we have two lots, one with Katarin males and one with Peliway males. When a male breeder enters the mounting lot, we paint him with methylene blue. Afterwards, the male mounts the female and we tag the female with a collar and we write it up in the farm's internal record. Females that are served stay with the males for approximately 36 days. Afterwards, they move on to the gestation lot. They get an ultrasound 35 days after entering the lot. The females that test negative on the ultrasound are given two additional chances. They go into a remounting lot where they spend the same amount of time with different males. During the last two months of gestation, sheep have very exacting needs. For that reason, it is best to keep them relaxed and with little exercise and under a special dietary regimen. Also during that period, they must be sheared, and a protocol that includes vaccination and deworming must be implemented. It's very important to improve the corporal conditioning of our sheep before birth, and we must feed them foods rich in energy and low in protein so as to guarantee weight gain for our lambs. Females due to give birth are taken up to the elevated pens. They are identified through a mount record or some obvious sign, such as a full udder and a colored vulva. On the day we visited this sheep ranch, we were fortunate to have the privilege of witnessing one of nature's most beautiful spectacles, an event that was five months in the making. During the birthing season, you must have trained personnel on hand since you will always have some birth complications, such as bad fetal positioning or a fetus that is too large. This system of birthing pens allows us to guarantee recognition between the mother and the newborn. Afterwards, we oversee the adequate consumption of colostrum during the first six hours. Then, a technician performs an inspection on the newborn, disinfects the umbilicus, and registers the event. The number of offspring per birth is related to the female's nutritional basis. These females can produce one, two, or three babies at a time, and for multiple births, you have to take a special approach, which is related to the quantity and quality of food the animal requires. 
The ewe and the lamb stay in the birthing pens for five days. Afterwards, they are taken to the elevated pens where they stay between 60 and 90 days, which is the duration of the lactation period. During this time, the ewes must supply milk for the newborn lamb and for the farm. That is why we must provide them with a nutritional regimen that favors milk production, since the ewe produces on average one liter of milk per day. As far as the nutritional requirements of the lamb are concerned, mother's milk is the ideal, and it is the only food able to fully satisfy its needs during its early life, when it is growing at an accelerated pace. These pens allow us to implement a creep feeding system where the lamb can feed on concentrate. In that way, we can begin to stimulate the rumen. In these elevated pens, we can divide multiple births from simple births, thus guaranteeing that multiple births get the special care they need. The elevated structure of these pens simplifies the daily collection of manure, which is later used as fertilizer for the moringa crops and for the forage grasses. The baby lambs move from these elevated pens to ground level pens 30 days after birth. Here, they will finish out their lactation period and go on to weaning. Meanwhile, we continue with the creep feeding and we give them feed that contains approximately 20% protein. This creep feeding system lets us guarantee an adequate consumption of concentrate. In that way, our lambs can reach much higher weights at weaning. Right now, we need female lambs to reach 20 kilos and for male lambs to reach 22 kilos on average. Our lambs continue on to the finishing lot where we take them up to 35 kilos on average and an age of approximately five to six months. We reserve the females and keep them here on the ranch. Let's learn more about Luis Eduardo Remolina, a man who has dedicated a large portion of his life to the countryside and who has been doing great work at this sheep ranch for some years. He is in charge of herding the animals to pasture and supplying their nutrition depending on their productive stage. This man has learned to care for his animals with love and dedication, and this has created a strong bond between them despite the occasional stray sheep. The first thing I do when I get up is to prepare their feed for when they come back from grazing. I've been doing this for three years and I like it, as you can see. It's my livelihood. Remolina, as his friends call him, is training two puppies who accompany him everywhere he goes. And even though they sometimes disperse, they try to help him with the difficult task of herding the sheep. These puppies? They are born with the instinct to work and to herd the sheep. Then, come here. Here we have a lot of 100 sheep, consisting of Santa Inés, Catarín, and Pelibue F1s. They are currently going through the mounting stage, and they are taken out to graze in the morning. Here we have a system of radius grazing, where we have paddocks, and they rotate in each paddock for five days. In the afternoon, they are taken back to the stable where we give them 300 grams of palm kernel per animal. Sheep ranching is a good alternative for livestock production because of the animal's qualities, as well as the geographic diversity of Colombia, which makes sheep ranching viable. This situation makes sheep the livestock with the best prospects for growth in Colombia. We are in an African palm plantation, which is used as a silvopastoral system for our sheep. These sheep eat all of the weeds, and as a result, they carry out an exceptional job of cleaning the palm. Afterwards, they are placed in bands, which rotate as the animals graze.
The electrical system for the fencing is powered by solar panels, which charge a battery and four wires that make their way around the palm plantation. The sheep arrive in this area at 9 in the morning, and they go back at 3 in the afternoon, at which time we supplement with 200 grams of palm kernel. We manage lots of approximately 400 animals, which makes the business profitable. These silvopastoral systems are very interesting because we can have animals at different stages of production, ranging from growing ewes to pregnant ewes about to give birth. At this time, we have 400 Santa Ines, Catadin, Pelibue, and Criolla F1s. These animals will graze in a hectare for one day and they will return to the same site in 90 days when the forage is at the right size for consumption. Entren, entren. Sigan. Sigan. Entrando, entrando. Negro. Ayude. When the afternoon starts to wind down, the sheep return to the paddock. It is indispensable that when they go into the paddock that they pass through a corridor that has water and disinfectant to adequately clean their hooves. Now we give them water. Let's see if they have feet or not. Now we clean the feeding troughs. We check the water. And once they're done eating, I can go home and rest. My workday is from 6 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. 